33% wins. Eh, Rogue gets the lean. Alright, Rogue it is. It's like leading by 2%, close enough. Let me get the tracker up. <clears throat> and here we go. Start with a happy little fairy. Oh, Yeti versus Sap. I know what the numbers say, but... This might be one of the times where my reign as mayor of Value Town compels me to pick Yeti over Sep. I, no, I, I do think Yeti is severely underrated by both of the websites rating the Yeti right now. Also, it's worth mentioning that most um, decks don't want more than one sap. So, the sap might come up again. Anyways, this is going to be like my most blatantly incorrect pick, probably. Sap is really good against uh, Steed, yeah, but, you know, that's just one class. Anyways, you guys can laugh at me for this pick, but... It's a Yeti, man. I'm just going pure valley town here in this grill. Storm and Knight's gotten the surprisingly good results. Sewer Ooze or Psychotron? You can see that the card reveals up. Um, I'll look at it after this game, I guess. After this arena draft finishes. Uh, so I have no taunts so far. Rogues like taunt. I have three threes, but two are a playable on three. I'll go with Psycho. Battle... Halu? Synergy. Hey, another Yeti. Let's see, I've got better staring reporters than the Yetis. Uh, Fairy Dragon, I suppose. Five mana, well, Tiger Plus. I already have three fives, though. Still the right pick. I already have four fives, but still the right pick, I think.
I already have five fives. That's still the right pick, I think. Hey, there's the sap. I already have six fives, so we're gonna take Huckster. Journey. Devil Sword. Rewarded for picking Yeti earlier, since, uh. The second sap isn't nearly as good as the first sap. I go shift. Don't need that many twos as rogue. Hmm. Do I have things that are good to bounce though? I guess I'll ask myself first. Lotus Agent. Charge Devil Sword. Generally big minions. Shiv. Snail. And that's a good target to bounce. And that's a good target to bounce also. Now do I have a little bit too heavy of late game is the question. Uh, what am I lacking right now? Three drops? And four drops, even though I picked the Yetis. So that first Yeti pick turned out to be really good. Uh, but I mean, that's variance. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I've got 10 late game cards, assuming Mimic Pot is a late game card. Uh, card's just really good, though. Hmm, Shadow, nice. Uh, Lasher is good. Aberrant Berserker is good. Let's see, on two I have th four cards already, which is like way above how much I usually have. I don't have any cards that require combo. I think we'll go Aberrant Berserker, just as a uh, another four drop. Solid. We don't need the early game, or we don't, we don't need the late game of Thistle Tea or Moat Lurker. I do have a uh, Fairy Man to bounce the Lurker though. Hmm. I don't need the extra two drops since I already have five early game plays with Deadly Poison counting as one. I'll go uh, Moat Lurker. Do I have anything good to Moat Lurker on my side? Nah, not really. Hmm. I'm a little bit low on threes. A little high on fives. Okay. So this is, I think, the first Rogue Arena run where I have not picked up Envenom Weapon. Uh, and Envenom Weapon is a great card. But we picked up a host of decent cards here. So let me let you guys uh, guess on what card, or let me let you guys guess on how good this arena run will go. Well, I go look at that new card. Shadow Reaper Anduin. Destroy all minions of five or more attack. Wow. After you play a card, refresh this. Void form. Hmm.
Seems good. Seems really good. Seems really good? Question mark? Hmm. Can we see it on stream? Sometimes I forget that the only reason why I'm... Sometimes I forget that the only thing I'm good for is being another source of Google. Feels bad, man. Google. So yeah, here's a new card. Change your hero power into a uh, two mana, deal two damage, refresh your hero power every time you play a card. The fact that it kills a minion when it comes into play, because that's when you would play it. That's, uh... That's pretty good. Basically makes you, uh, generate a deal two for two pretty much every turn. Double Radiant Shadow Vision OTK. That actually does work. After you've played Raza. That could actually be a deck. So all you would need... Well, no, that's pretty tough, actually. You would need to have drawn both of your... No, that's pretty impractical. The tough part is you need to have one of the Shadow Visions in your deck for that to work. Yeah. Seems like a good late game card though. I mean, Shadow Form is a good late game card. It's just that it didn't do enough. But Shadow Reaper Anduin kills a guy. Minimum. When it comes into play. Ideally, it kills two guys. Even a spell that said destroy all minions of five or more attack. Like, that would probably cost six legitimately. So it's one of those value cards. Alright, let me uh, let me talk about how well I think this deck will do. Well, then we'll go to the subs, and then we'll, uh, we'll get started. So, uh, this rogue deck 
Even though we didn't pick up the Vile Spine Slayer, which I don't think I've ever drafted yet. With all the months that Angoro has come out. Uh, notably, I don't have Envenom Weapons. First time I don't have it. So... We don't have the super strong cards, but we've got a good collection of cards. Uh, Deadly Poison, Journey Below... Well, in the early game, I've got Deadly Poison that I want to play actively. We'll ignore those two for now. Fairy Dragon, Gadzian, Fairy Man, uh, Gastropod, and Huckster. So five. That's actually above the usual amount that I have for Rogue. Since I usually just push the button. And the curve follows with a decent uh, set of threes. Well, Demolisher is probably the weakest card in this deck. Igneous isn't that strong, but it's not bad. Vicious Fledgling. Uh, so I can easily start off with one of like the four or two drops into the Demolisher, or the Vicious Fledgling. Uh, very glad I picked up the Yeti. I only have four four drops, but they're all good ones. A lot of five drops, and they're all good. And then uh, a few sixes. Well, lots of sixes, actually, in eight. So, this deck's got a really good balance of mana. It's rogue. I love the hero power. Out of all the classes, I love the rogue hero power the most. I keep saying this every time I pick Rogue, but it's just, uh, that hero power is so good. Just because it has the hero power, I usually assign, like, plus one point on average. So, I think I have a slightly above average deck in the sense that the curve is really good, but I didn't get any super powerful cards, but still slightly above average. Uh, so, for that reason... I think a slightly above average deck, given the free arena run and the free win, uh, would pull about a 9 win. So combined with the fact that I'm rogue specifically, I'm going to bump it up one more point. And I'm going to guess uh, we'll go 10 wins. Uh, most of chat thinks that I'm going to be doing the s slightly above average in terms of my in terms of, like, the best arena players, I guess. Because we're establishing average as somewhere like 7 to 8 when you look at the arena leaderboard. So, average for a really good arena player. Which leads me to think that I just am not on the arena leaderboards because I don't pick Rogue every single time I can. When I'm assigning like an extra point to Rogue just for picking Rogue, that's when you know that I actually think one class is clearly better than the rest. And this is like a personal bias, because I don't assign an extra point for Mage or Paladin. Well, no, that's not true. I assign, an ex I, I assign extra points for Spike Ridge Steed and Meteors. It's just in Rogue, I feel like I don't even need this. Because I always have the hero power. Thanks for subbing, Roughnecks. Android Labs. Yeah, when uh, when it comes down to Mage and Paladin, it comes down to like getting the really good card. In which case, you get the points. But Rogue, like just for picking Rogue, you get the points. And then there's not as many high roll cards. But Foul Spine Slayer is an extra point. An extra win. Something like that. Uh, Gangrel. The Meme Man. Mole 6. Storm. Thank you for the uh, storm of Twitch Prime subs, Amazon Prime subs there. Cleanse. Quart. You guys are as valuable as this rogue hero power. General Tag. Defcon. Stringier. And the Secretary Chan. Thank you guys so much for spending your Amazon Prime sub on dear old me.
All right, let me uh, take the screenshot using the new snipping tool that you guys have let me discover so that I no longer have to use paint. Let's see. Today is August 4. The snipping tool thing is amazing. It saves me so many clicks. All right, let's see. Back to my roots from four years ago. Let's see if two chill wind Yeti can carry. Okay, do I have everything set up? I often forget one thing or another. We have the deck list up. I turned off the full screen overlay. The deck list is accurate. And I tweeted. I voted. It seems like everything is good. But that went so fast that I feel like something was missing. Okay. Kibler, Firebed, and Frodan are saying ultimate infestation is overrated. Those scumbags. It's worth mentioning also that this deck has a lot more late game than I expect uh, because of Journey Below and Hallucination. Those can get late game cards. Uh, because my deck has more late game than I already need, I'm more inclined to pick early game cards of Journey Below and Hallucination though. The pleasure is mine. Okay, well, that's fine. It's actually a decent pick. Do I... Oh, no! I was about to play the Ferryman into the potential explosive trap. But... Now we have to save the Ferryman with the Lurker. That's probably my turn 7 play. Uh, coin lurker or ferryman. Time to die. The most uh, likely card that he's willing to play, the most likely secret, would be a cat trick. Rexar is on the hunt for my face already. Uh, this might be one of the very, very weird games in which I don't use my hero power at all. Less weird, um, given I'm against Hunter, I guess. It's just I can't pa get past this Tar Cooper with the uh, hero pair. Hmm. I've got a huge time. Wow. Ooh, that's good. That's really good. Well played. This thing is going to market. Eat it. 
That madman commanded my face. So it's gotta be cat trick then. So I'll try to avoid playing the coin. Ferryman is really good on this guy, but it's really good on Moatlurker. He's almost out of cards though, so he probably can't... Alright, I'll get back my little friend. I really don't need the value, but the main problem is I don't have the curve to play anything else. I could fork Fledge, but, uh, I mean, that's a completely valid play, too. They're both good. He's just ruined either way, I imagine. Just wanted to think it through on which one was best, though. Very rare is the game has rogue where I don't use my hero power. But Hunter would be the class that I wouldn't use it against if there were any class, I suppose. Okay, I've got 21. I just enjoy watching his bitterness because he hasn't been able to activate this secret. This too is despair. Here we go. What? How's that lethal? Hey, Over here. I would have done an extra 2 damage, an extra 3 damage, and the opponent said 5. It's like you guys think 3 plus 2 equals 5 or something. We wouldn't see Knuckles lethal otherwise though. Alright, 
add the free win. Frodan trashed my card, Ultimate Infestation, as a Timmy's Dream card. Oh, no, that's definitely a Timmy's Dream card. It's true. That by itself isn't trashing. It's definitely a Timmy's Dream card. Just happens to also be a good card. It's worth ferrying back. Worse than any of the old gods. Okay, well that makes it that Frodan is now the greatest anime betrayal, 2017. Looks pretty good when I uh, put on the Hog Rider. Wow, this is going to be yet another game where I don't make much use of my hero power. Very unusual. Now, common uh, thinking is just to put the fairy dragon in the middle. And that would be slightly wrong here because the meteor wants to land on the 5-5 five five, and then it splashes on the fairy. If it splashes on uh, this instead, then that's still true. Hmm. The 
gates are open. Corrupted Seer is doing pretty well here. Sap is also doing pretty well. I wonder. With the Sap, I get to develop a uh, Yeti as well. And then the next turn, I can Argent Commander plus Hero Power down the 6 5. Sapping a 6 5 is really good. Sapping a 6 mana card is really good. Patience. Gates are open. I like how this egg has sat on the sidelines since I think it was turn one. I hope I didn't miss lethal there. I had like a uh, five damage, but I need to deal one damage. I think I was one short. Play 10 elementals. I do have Igneous Elemental in this deck. Elementals are pretty commonly played. Yeah, I'll keep that, I guess. Let's get rid of that one. Dang. Ah, thanks for seven. We have Ghost is Roast. Anyone try Roast Ghost before? Probably meat is too tough, right? MJ Green. La Zombra, Yorwi asks, how much value can a value priest have if it values its value game? Well, with that new uh, priest death knight, the answer is a lot. You can uh, theoretically have infinite value. Actually, theoretically. Amphid, SF, thanks for two years of subbing. Uh, the Stone of the Hearth. Wow. And then fill in. Thank you guys. Goat tastes ghastly. Hmm. Valir versus Jaina. You asked for it. Watch your back.
Got the ferryman moat lurker combo, but I don't think I keep that in my opening hand. I was ready to play the ferryman on turn two. Mm, ferryman really good with Rocketeer also. Also really good with Lotus Agents. By really good, I mean slow. Could just play the 2-3 right now. It performs uh, well against that 2-3. Because I'm rogue. Yeah, I've got enough value. We don't need to get super value. We have many secrets. You want to buy a funnel cake? No secret. Herein lies the tempo of uh, Rogue. Uh, this dagger is going to end up killing two minions for just two mana. Actually, a decent ooze. Well, yeah, because otherwise I could kill the 4 3. My shield for Arga. Ooh. Wow, that's. Greedy, but works here. So many options. Any healing death rattle minions I can think of? I wonder. Pod into arcane? What? Oh, for the last turn to dodge five damage? Nah, that would cause me to lose. Mistress? I couldn't kill that though. Hmm. There's no way I could get a heal. That's what I spent most of my turn thinking about. That was, uh, wow. That Kirin Tor Mage ended up doing. Let's see, it hit me once for four, and I think it hit me twice for five? So Kirin Tor Mage did like 14 damage. Or did it hit me one more time on top of that? And then. The Ooze hit me once, the Sun Fury hit me once, and then two Fireballs. And it's just. The Friend of Argus hit me once. It's pretty rough. Very facey. Oh, 
Valir versus Anduin. The life shall bring victory. Watch your back. It's one of my few three drops. Probably should keep it. If I had more three drops, I would have mulliganed elemental then. This is actually a tough call between uh, Aya and Egnatra. So it's a six four eight six by itself across multiple things. Hmm. Eggnapper is a 5-3 if I put it that way. It's up against a class I can't deal one damage. Hmm. Snub the Aya. If I draw a 4 drop, I'll coin a 3 drop. If not, we'll see what he plays. <sighs> Eggnapper should counter whatever he plays next turn. No, that trade's actually necessary, since if I play the 2-3, the opponent... Well, it's not necessary, but I could lose out big time to Potion of Madness otherwise. If I uh, were to take the Igneous and then throw it into Eggnapper. Also, it would have been slightly annoying for uh, Igneous to hit Igneous. Complete the uh, play 10 elementals is actually pretty easy with 
Igneous Elemental. Probably get it done this, uh, this round. Interesting. I wasn't expecting that trade. But that's, uh. That, that is getting punished. But interesting! And not entirely wrong. I think this tests for Potion of Madness. Okay. You're getting things done. The game begins. Flames consume you. Strong five mana card. That's pretty good. Wasn't even necessary. Alright, thanks for seven. We have... The Cryo Gallows. Snapfish, Zap Cuppy, and Zomapia. That many fours, so do I want to keep this chill wind yeti? That definitely goes. Yeah, two drop coin yeti. The classic. Two, three, four, five. It's pretty good too. Where do I use the dagger? Reporting for duty. Ah, coin dagger. 
The only hero power good enough to coin dagger. To coin, I mean. That turns the coin into whirlwind. Kind of. Basically. Every single time I match up against Paladin, I pretty much always say this. But the counter is real. Now, we could get greedy here. Get punished by uh, exactly Blessing of Kings. Hmm. Kill a free 1-1, one, one, basically. If I take 12... I still can't kill it next turn, so I'd take another 12. So that'd be casual 24 damage. If they have exactly one card. Hmm. Yeah, that card is pretty slow value, so I guess we can play that one. It's not quite the same as a 4-2, though. It's typically worse than a 4-2, because it can't trade into a 4-health minion. That is why I think of it as a 2-2, with Wind Fury instead of a 4-2. So that's either Adaptation or, uh, or Divine Shield, apparently. My next Curve Stone is pretty good here. 4 mana, 5, 6. 5 mana, 4, 5 with Divine Shield. 6 mana, 5, 3 with Charge. And Divine Shield. That plus one, plus one helped so much. And it was completely safe. Oh, 
Valley Sword of Justice was uh, two charges buff, three uh, weapon attacks, but that's still good. Yep. Here we go. Got the big time racketeer fairy man for a uh, late game super value. Take it. Kill them all. That's not a clear board. Oh crap, Shiv doesn't even kill that. Still good. Just have to change the plan. That does need to die, so the five one doesn't die. The snail is decent here. Toss out two of those guys. All right. I probably should have hallucinated for something. Yep. Instead of playing a one two. We can sap that, and that would mean he's definitely got a Corrupted Seer in hand, which I can play around. Play the big time Racketeer. So many options. Okay, it is hallucination first. Huh. Does this change everything? Seven, seven. By the way, uh, since a lot of people are asking about it, if I attack the, um, if I shiv the Daring Reporter, and the Daring Reporter is at one health, it does not die. I thought I, uh, made that amply clear, but some people are questioning the play, so. That's what happens. I'm scared to go down to one. It makes me vulnerable to a few things that deal two. Uh, the most common card would be Consecration. But it seems we don't really have a choice. 
Well met. It was fixed, but that's Mortal Coil, where you deal the damage and then draw the card. But Shiv, you deal damage and draw the card at the same time, I believe. Feel free to test and let me know. I'm pretty certain that I'm right, though. Uh, we'll go for the chance that I get healing. Well, that was pretty bad, overall. Uh, Fairy Man probably would have been good here. I didn't want to punch that to take a damage. Reporting for duty. My eyes are open. I got distracted having to explain the interaction between Shiv and Daring Reporter. See, this is part of what makes streaming hard. It's the weakness. It's the handicap. That one wasn't my fault! Hmm. Well played. Well met. A little bit my fault. I wonder. Well met. Hmm. Let me, uh, rope in peace. I'm so bitter. Alright, so for my information, what do you guys think? Does that work? Shiving a uh, one health reporter. Does it kill it or not? I think the only change was to exactly mortal coil. Yeah, it doesn't work. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty certain on that one. I think. I think I was aware of some sort of change, but that was too, that was too exactly Mortal Coil, where the order was you had to deal one damage, and then if it died, then you draw a card. So because you had to check for like the death state of it, then you drew the card. That's why Coil works, but Shiv doesn't. Now, I did plan on playing Corrupted Seer that turn, and I might have had a stronger turn, though. Valera versus Mayen. None can escape my fury. Watch your back.
Here we go. Ash to ash. Sure, I'll take a little bit of casual eight damage. One way or another, I was going to deal uh, two damage to it. Get Vicious Fledgling on an empty board if I use Sap. It's four mana minion. Probably worth. Coming through. He didn't have a way to kill it last turn, so I imagine he still doesn't. So we give it a plus attack. Not possibly be right. If I choose stealth, I theoretically win the next turn. And it's ten damage. Got the psychotron in the way. Means get through taunt and deal two. Think. Not impossible, but kind of tough. Is Doctor Three? It's thanks to the guts of plus three attack.
And the opponent also did have some guts in not killing the card. Which might have been legitimate. Dagger is pretty tempting to but I get to develop a 2 1 in addition to Dagger in this case. Makes me glad that I hit it before, so there's less to buff. This only works on the simple minded. So we can send both of these at it. Is there any better play? The dagger is enough to kill it. The deadly poison is enough to kill it. Maybe I should be killing that instead. Hmm. Uh, what do I do with the rest of my mana? Or maybe I'm supposed to. Maybe I'm supposed to coin out a five here. Maybe dagger coin three is right. No, two four is bad against the fourth. No, it's not. That's fine. It's somewhat important to make sure that that doesn't spot another imp because uh, it'd push it into a range that would be awkward to kill while also providing another one one. That was an interesting turn. For no spike ridged. And then if spike ridged, we hope we get sap. Come on, sap. Oh, is that good? That is pretty good, actually. Hmm. It's not good enough, but it's good. Let me think. 
only works on the simple minded. <sighs> well, any cards save me here. With the mimic pod. Sap probably. No, that still so kills me. Unless I sap extremely aggressively. So maybe some kind of death rattle card is better? I mean, ultimately, I'm going to lose either way, I imagine. Wow, so much value. Just you wait till I get to turn 15. Well played. I get 